This week, I got to host a super interesting discussion on how to grow carbon markets, how to grow successful carbon markets. Uh, and it was with uh, Liz from Microsoft, Julio from uh, Columbia University and Carbon Direct, uh, and Suchi from the Department of Energy, who used to be at Carbon 180. Uh, and we had this super interesting discussion. It will be up on, on YouTube. Uh, Verge is working on, on posting it. Uh, but one of the key takeaways was really the discussion around uh, the, the lack of supply of carbon removal. And, and this is something that, that I've, I've referenced before. It's come up in um, the, the discussions we had with Stripe uh, and with Shopify as well, where it's just for the, for the, for the companies that are working to, for the, for the customers, for the purchasers, they're actually not able to find enough carbon removal credits or they're not able to find uh, affordable, high quality, uh, and one other variable that I'm blanking on, but Liz put it really well, there these three variables she was interested in. Um, they're not able to find enough. Uh, Liz mentioned they were, they were aiming for like 50 uh, million tons of carbon that they were going to remove, and they instead found more on the order of like two. So it's like there's an order of magnitude difference in terms of the supply and the demand. Um, and so I think that's that's super interesting, and it gets me thinking about, we, we talked a lot about kind of the, the, the standards for carbon removal. Uh, how do we ensure a level of quality? Uh, and it made me think about the, the opportunity for entrepreneurs, for scientists, for engineers, for people who are in the carbon removal industry to help to create uh, those standards. What is it that you want uh, carbon removal markets to look like? Um, the, I think the, the, the question really for if you're a, if you're a founder and you're, you're working on uh, creating uh, a company that, that pulls carbon from the atmosphere, I think up until recently the question used to be uh, if there'll be a buyer for your carbon removal credits. And now it's very quickly shifting to there will be a buyer. Customers are coming. Capital is coming. The question is really, who do you want to sell your carbon removal credits to? Maybe you say you don't care. Maybe you say, you know what, I'm just going to go sort by who, who gives the highest bid and we'll, we'll, we'll sell it there. Part of building a company is working with your customers. If your customers you know, say, all, say all the things that they need uh, and you end up building something different for every single customer, that's a lot of work. Whereas if you can come in and help to set the standard, if you can create the standard for, for what you are going to sell and who you're going to sell it to, then that starts to create better standards for everybody. Maybe you're in a, in a, in a town or a, um, a city where you're starting to think about, hey, what kind of carbon removal credits do we want to be produced here? You have a role to play in, in creating those standards um, as well. Specifically, I'm, I'm curious about uh, if, if this is coming up for, for anybody out there thinking about creating carbon rule standards. Uh, all the stakeholders that are needed uh, from, from corporations to governments to people to towns to, um, to schools, everybody that's, that's going to be involved in the, in the carbon removal credit market. Um, and specifically through Airmar's Launchpad, uh, I'm, I'm quite interested in how that works for early stage startup companies. We work with, with teams that are basically working on how to, how to mine their first ton of carbon from the atmosphere. Uh, if you start to think about the requirements there, it's, you know, some of these early carbon credits, you're happy to sell for cheap because you can get the, you know, get the cash flow, get the company started. And later on, you know, you can, you can raise the price. And so if you're, if you're thinking about the, the quality standards for carbon removal, you know, as an entrepreneur, maybe you're, you, you'd prefer if they were a little bit looser at the beginning and, and they tightened up later. Um, or maybe if you're, you know, if you're a, a company working on a, uh, an area of carbon removal that, that isn't really recognized right now by, by policies and standards uh, like mineralization or, or ocean-based carbon removal, maybe you'd really want that level of detail about your solution or, or your kind of set of solutions to be part of uh, to be part of standards, so I think it's a lot that that entrepreneurs and scientists, and engineers, uh, and just kind of other people that are that are have it, have an investment in carbon removal, whether it's your time, uh, your money, your future. Uh, there's a, there's a big role to play, and right now most of that is coming from corporates and customers. And I think there's so many other roles that that can be that can be filled in to figure out how do we actually create this large scale carbon removal marketplace. So if you're thinking about what should go into a carbon removal standard, what makes a quality carbon removal credit, I'd love to hear your latest thinking on it.